Hey guys, welcome to another video of Black Desert Academy and today we're going to be talking about an intermediate um, guide to fishing. So fishing is a really long haul, long run type of profession. But once you reach a certain threshold, I want to say about um, artisan to master level, it really starts picking up. But fishing is my, by far my favorite thing to do AFK because it requires little to no investment and easy to set up on the fly when I have to go out. And since I'm a heavy AFKer now more than ever, fishing has become really my main source of income. So let's get started, okay? So first I'm going to address it as if you haven't fished a day in your life. So if you haven't fished a day in your life, I do suggest you starting off with an Ephira fishing rod. Most guys will tell you to get like an old rod or a white rod or whatever it's called, but I suggest an Ephira fishing rod, okay? And if you're not super brand new to the game but you're just new to fishing and you have some money to throw around I do suggest you wait to find an enchanted F area fishing rod to pop up in the marketplace anything that's like plus one plus two three or four if not just get a clean one and start off there the main reason why I said F area fishing rod is mainly because it has high durability and therefore you won't be limited because of your lack of skill level because when you just start off as a fisherman you only get about a crappy rod that only can let you catch like 10 fish before it's all the durability and it takes a while to hit skilled 5 to use an actual decent rod so a free rod I, um, I strongly suggest you get it will help speed up the process of leveling up your fishing skill and the rod requires no level requirement to use next I want to su suggest that you um, <clears throat> invest in a fishing costume um, the marketplace costume um, silver embroidered fishing costume is easy to get, it's easy to enchant to, fairly cheap, probably the cheapest costume out of all the costumes in the game, and I do suggest you get it to either plus one or plus two, shouldn't be, shouldn't be too hard to be honest. Okay, so once you got the rod, you got the costume, let's talk about the money aspect of fishing for beginners, okay? So everyone knows about the Velia hotspot, I do suggest the Velia hotspot as well, because you'll be catching majority of blue and orange fish, and those fish will give you the most amount of EXP. Um, another thing you should know is that Velia is also home to an Imperial Fish Trader too, and if you wait at the right time of a reset, you can sell your hotspot catches to the Imperial Fish, tra Imperial Fishing Trader, or, uh, uh, Imperial Fish Trader. Sorry, it's the reason it ties my tongue, and you sh should be able to make a good good amount of money I want to say like five million five to six million depending on how many inventory slots you have and how many fish of course me I have a hundred and twenty plus inventory slots and if I fish at the hot spot and I um catch the Imperial trade with fishing and I, I could usually haul away about I want to say about anywhere from like five to five to eight million in the Imperial trade haul from an overnight uh, fishing spree and I can, and this is not including like relics or anything else, just like the basic stuff. Um, the main reason I choose Velia to fish is pretty because of relics. Anyway, the, the um, hotspots will be just off the coast of Velia. You, you won't be able to miss it because it'll be a, like a huge crowd of players fishing all in the same spot. And when you see that, then you know you're in the right spot. So fish there until you get to about skilled 5, guys. Once you get to about skilled 5, you can keep using Ethereum or you can use disposable steel rods. That's your choice. Um, another thing you need to do at this point too is start to look into and in getting more inventory slots. And if you are serious about fishing, then I do suggest a character that you designate as your fisher complete all the boss scroll um, black spirit quest that gives you inventory slots, as well as the side quests that you can find. And I linked the video, and you can look up a video about getting all the inventory slots in the game. And um, once you do all of that, I think you should have about 70 or 80 inventory slots. And if you want to go further beyond um, Dragon Ball Z style, you can um, buy them using the loyalties, or you can buy them using um, the mark um, the cash shop. Um, I do suggest using the cash shop if you're really just hardcore about the game. If you're not hardcore, but you you want to make decent money, but you don't care about making huge amounts of money, then don't use any real money. Just use your loyalties to slowly get more inventory slots. It really won't hurt you. I do suggest the Black Spirit Adventure game because there are several spots that give you 700 and if you unlock a hidden path in the Black Spirit Adventure game, you can also get 1500 if you land on the loyalty spot. That's the main reason why I have like 10 to 11 or even 12k loyalty um, points at times. Um, but that should cover the fundamentals, okay? Now let's talk about the money making of fishing. 
So fishing is a good source of income, but there's different ways you can make large amounts of money with fishing. One is due the due to the Valia hotspot with Imperial Trade setup. Another setup is going into the deep into the ocean with large inventory slots and master two trading and then selling your all your fish in Valencia plus keeping the relics for parties. You can make it easily twenty to thirty mil an hour using that method, but that requires a lot of prerequisites like master two trading, master level fishing, good rod, um, you know, inferior boat being a bigger one, and there's other things to set it up. So, but you can easily make thirty mil. I, I know some people who actually make sixty to seventy mil an hour fishing actively though. This is not AFK. Um, in the deep ocean making a large amount of relics because of the bite time being significantly shorter than um, that of the regular ocean. So when I say deep ocean, I'm talking about heading towards Megoria area for Port Rat type of area. I haven't traveled there yet, but this other information I want to conclude another video about that whole thing anyway. So that's one way you can make money fishing. So I do suggest hotspots in the beginning. For intermediate fishers like me, I would suggest using Velia River to fish mainly because it's easy access you can sell all your fish directly to the trader but non hotspot fishers gets more relic shards so if you are like me who wants to stack up on relics and memory fragments and stuff like that for a bigger cash cash out during relic parties at the end of the week then that is what you would probably want to do um, if you get a large amount of inventory spots though you do not want to use Velia because you won't be able to get as many fish as you have inventory slots because the spot is always exhausted. So I advise you to set up camp in Calpheon if you have over 110, um, I'll say 110, or over 100 inventory slots in fishing because setting up in Calpheon is still a uh, same kind of river as, as, as um, Heidel, but the Heidel River is always exhausted and Calpheon is abundant. So you can fill 120 slots a lot easier with being AFK for only like 6 to 8 hours compared to having to be AFK for like 10 hours plus to fill 120 spots in Heidel River. So therefore you don't you could just sleep and wake up and most likely all your inventory slots will be full. Relic drop rate is relatively the same as Heidel's River as well. So that's one thing to think about. Moving forward, um, you can make about this AFK fishing overnight with 120 spots this is how much money I make in relics I get about I want to say I get about on average five to six I would say six relics a night after a seven hour AFK session before I wake up so seven um seven relics I mean six relics that's 3.6 million relics alone every night that I make and not including the fish but on average I catch about you know 120 fish or so so that fish usually trades in I usually make about anywhere from an extra 600k to a million dollars from the fish I trade in so and I don't travel far to let me add that to the information I don't travel far either I, I sell it within the city or sell it pretty close to the city because fishing I'm not a hardcore fisher in right now so I don't really care about the time to travel across the map just to drop off some fish so oh every night I make about four to four point five mil ish and the relics that I, I'm using the base value of the relics, and the relic is kind of exponential due to the fact that once I add gold to, um, and use them in a relic party using scrolls, I get drops and other extra stuff for income. So I do end up pulling about 200 mil uh, a week from relics alone and doing parties and scrolls. So that's if you guys can fish as much as I do and actually reach that level of fishing where you're mass level with 100 plus inventory slots, then you can easily be pushing at least 100 mil plus a week just from the AFK fishing income alone. Next, I'm gonna talk about totems, okay? Now, totems are these little fish things you get, you can add to your boat equipment, okay? You can get them from your fish, um, your wharf manager, and click on the shop icon. Totems are something that gets EXP by catching fish nearby, and the way you upgrade them is similar to alchemy stones, except for you just invest a certain amount of weapon stones, and then you hit the um, enchant enhance button. So the thing about totems is that they need to be at least 80% in EXP, so you have to catch enough fish for the totem pole to reach, I mean the totem fish to reach 80%. To um, <clears throat> to um, get your fish to reach um, EXP faster, to hot spots is the fastest way to level totems, but it's not, it's not required at all. Uh, this is a good way to get passive income on top of the fishing income you get, because leveling up totems and then selling them into the marketplace is a, is a good and profitable um, 
venture to go into because you don't have that much competition since not many fishers will tell you about the whole totem market. So the thing about it, though, is that there is a chance of failure, but if you use about weapon stones, though, you usually get a good success. And when, and it's worth the investment because counting the totem and the cost of the weapon stones, when, if it upgrades, it goes up in value by several millions, thus you're making a profit. And all you're doing is fishing it while leveling it up. So you're just slowly making a profit over time. You can make about 20 to 30 mil in totem sales alone every month while continuing to AFK fish. So it's, it's a healthy thing to do. Um, to enhance a totem, though, you have to be at least professional in fishing or higher. So please keep that in mind. But it's nothing, can, nothing can stop you from leveling up totems right now. So when you finally hit professional, you can just start upgrading a bunch of totems and selling them for a later date. If you do want to keep your totem, though, it will help your boat move faster. Some things upgrades in speed and other aspects of your boat. Um, enchanting your boat's prow will increase its speed by default. And collecting all three parts that are matching and set will also give your boat more speed. And if you hate sailing as much as I do, this will be very beneficial. So now let's talk about hot spot fishing, okay? Now hot spot fishing is hit or miss. I made anywhere from like 3 mil to literally 70 mil in a hot spot fish hunting, which I sail around the nearby oceans looking for hot spots. Um, there are several hot spots. There's some that are permanent but invisible. There are moving hot spots that are visible to people of certain fishing level. And there is also another special hot spot called coelacanth hot spot. Now coelacanth hot spots are very tricky. You can locate them just off the coast of Velia and Ephyr Port and maybe other areas in the map. But Velia, the ones that spawn nearby Velia Ports and Ephyr Ports are the ones that's more confirmed. And you can go hunting in the world to find extra ones to confirm them yourself. If you're looking for other hotspot leads, another good place to check out is um, somethinglovely.net. They have a good list of fishing hotspots. No, please keep in mind that the hotspots listing on that website are mobile hotspots or hotspots that spawn occasionally, so they won't be there at all times. Now let's talk about the coelacanth hotspot, okay? Now this is where the triple float fishing rod really shines. So the reason why you wouldn't want to use a triple float fishing rod for a coelacanth hotspot is because that you only get to cast a rod in the hotspot once. A coelacanth is worth about $200,000 base, not cooling other bonuses if you have master trading and distance and so on. So when you do get that one cast in the hotspot before it disappears, you want to be using a rod that allows you to catch multiple fish at once. I do also suggest that you use a lot of energy with that cast so you can have a chance of getting up to four or five fish with the triple um four to five fish with the um, triple flow fishing rod. And that can easily easily net you about one million dollars just in that single cast with the base price of the fish, not counting if you actually you know travel to train them. So you can also travel around the map looking for coelacan spots. If you, and if you can find several spots an hour, then you'll literally be making about a grinder's amount of money. But that's not realistic. Another another method is to find regular hotspots. Regular hotspots will not give you relic shards, sadly, though. But there are some hotspots that I literally timed myself for 30 minutes um, to fish in and see how much income I made. So the first time I got about 4 mil in 30 minutes from the fish, the gold fish I caught. And another time I made about 8 mil in 30 minutes from the fish I got. Now the reason why I'm saying 30 minutes is because when I got to the hotspots or the hotspots I was waiting for them to um, to spawn is because um, the hotspots only last 30 minutes so you can just keep catching goldfish over and over again for th in 30 minutes. Another thing I want to keep in mind is to keep your fishing skill at high levels if you are going to do this and a fast boat is a must to make this way efficient. Now another thing to really push your fishing income threshold to the 100 million to multi probably like I say about like four to five hundred million dollars a week mark is to get your master um, to trading up as well as master level fishing. So you will need master level trading and master level fishing to be a billion dollar fisher. So you want to be a billion dollar fisher making over a bill a month through the fishing and other sea like activities, you will need master two trading as well as master to master plus fishing. Once you're master level in fishing, you're able to see the hotspots and you will be able to see the seagulls as well as the types of fish that's in the hotspots that jump out of the water. From what I can tell that um, levels below um, master can um, cannot see the hotspots. I think artisans can still like catch the hotspots, hotspot fish and anything below artisan cannot even get the hotspot fish at all. Keep that in mind, leveling up fishing is 
a long and drawn out method, but to me is a worth investment. But in my opinion, almost every life skill is a worth investment besides alchemy at the current stage. But I hope this video kind of gave you guys an idea how to get some passive income through fishing. Leveling it up is the most important part of this phase. And if you guys get a proper fishing fisherman set up, you can easily be making extra 100 to 200 mil a week. Um, given the other stuff given in my other videos, you guys should be given enough information to be making about a, at least a billion dollars every three weeks at that kind of rate. But I still have a couple more videos to go, and if you guys did enjoy this video and you did find it helpful, please consider hitting that like button. And if you guys appreciate the videos I do and, and upload, um, please leave in a comment and give me suggestions on other information you might find useful. I'm also trying to check out some videos on Striker too, that class also interests me a lot, though I am not the type to go to Korea and download the game um, and play it early. But let me know how you guys feel about Striker too, I'm also really curious about that. Do you guys, If you guys hear anything about what its awakening weapon would be, please hit me up on the Discord, I'm very curious about that. Anyway guys, this video has been on long enough. Don't forget to subscribe if you're new to and I'll see you guys next time. Peace.